Right about now you're probably starting to see the odd video about Cataclysm pop up here and there, and if the way Classic has progressed so far is any indicator, I would not be surprised at all if we were to be heading back to a remade Azeroth for the next step of our Classic journey. Looking back though, Cataclysm is an expansion that's always had a lot of criticism against it. The talent changes, Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor being remade and the quests updated, and a noticeable sub drop off reported by Blizzard on a patch by patch basis. And I have to say every expansion is definitely deserving of criticism in one way or another. If I wanted to come up with problems for each of the three versions of Classic so far, I wouldn't have many problems in doing so, such as vanilla class balance being hilariously bad and most of the specs are total means. The Burning Crusades idea of adding difficulty was making trash harder than bosses and then adding in mind controls which blow your major cooldowns and silences. And Raph the Lich King arguably has two rather average raid tiers. All the same, you've also probably been seeing videos trending towards actually Cataclysm really wasn't that bad, and that's something I also agree with. But just as any other expansion does, it has real issues. So let's talk about them. What were some of the major problems? Why did they cause issues? And ultimately, was anything changed because of them? A major new feature of the expansion was expanding guilds beyond just an organized group of individuals into an actual gameplay system. Now you had reasons to work towards achievements as a guild, to stick with the same guild to earn reputation with them, and eventually you would start seeing a whole range of rewards for your continued loyalty. To explain the guild advancement system in short, as you quested and achievements, did rated battlegrounds and completed raid content as a majority of the same guild, you would earn reputation with your guild just as you would with any other faction. At certain reputation thresholds, you will be able to buy a range of heirlooms, mounts, cooking recipes, and more for gold from a vendor in your capital cities. Your guild also had to have completed certain achievements in order to unlock these rewards for guild members of the appropriate reputation to buy. For example, your guild needed a total level of 20 and your reputation had to be honoured to buy the new heirlooms. So how do you level your guild up then? From completing quests or daily quests which gave experience, winning rated battlegrounds as a guild group, or doing raid content as a majority guild group. Each one of these activities would grant XP and your guild would just level up over time. And not only was your guild level required for certain reputation rewards, at every single new guild level, all members of your guild would enjoy new passive bonuses. At level 3 you got 10% bonus mount speed, at level 8 you reduce your hearthstone's cooldown to 15 minutes, level 21 allowed you to summon all raid or party members to the player's location. This was extremely overpowered for raiding the other faction's capitals, one rogue could summon an army out of nowhere. It was kind of hilarious though. And at level 25 your guild got something that healers can currently only dream of, the amazing power of mass resurrection. This sounds all pretty awesome so far, so where are the problems in this? Well the issues stem more or less entirely from a little perk you get at guild levels 5 and 16 called cash flow. Cash flow reads, each time you loot money from an enemy, an extra 10% money is generated and deposited directly into your guild bank. 10% doesn't sound like much, but when it's hundreds of players leveling, doing dungeons, raiding and just contributing, that 10% does start to become noticeable. Because of this perk was the birth of what became known as the Cesspool Guild. You see in Cataclysm as a fresh character, you 100% did want to be in a guild. You got increased mount speed, 10% more XP gained, reduced hearthstone cooldown and so much more. But players caught on to the fact that they could just recruit about anyone to your guild and they would be feeding 10% of the gold they make through drops directly into the guild bank. And have a guess where that money goes from the guild bank straight into the pockets of the guy spamming invites to anyone and everyone. Back in the day, within one minute of making a fresh character on a Cataclysm server, you would be getting bombarded with guild invites as players fought over this fresh resource that had just been added to their realm. There is some transactional value in it though, don't get me wrong. You get the guild bonuses, they get extra gold. But it leads a lot of players, particularly newer players, into guilds which were just really shells designed to skim some gold off of their leveling. 
and they had no ambition to do anything else apart from just to generate easy gold for the GM. At the time, this was even noted to fuel some degenerative player behaviour, as quoted by Ian Hazakostis, and Blizzard very much recognised that it was just leading to spam invites for newer players. For Kata these days, this one perk might need a bit of a rethink. Next up, when Cataclysm launched, Blizzard opted for a different approach to dungeon content. Lead system designer Ghostcrawler was not overall happy with how heroic dungeons had turned out in Wrath of the Lich King. During Wrath, players have become all too accustomed to joining into a dungeon through the LFD, holding down their W key whilst pressing their AoE abilities, and then collecting some purples at the end. When players first entered Kata Heroics though, they were met with an entirely different experience, and Ghostcrawler made a large post following complaints about its difficulty, which as a TLDR, essentially reads as, get good. This post included the quote, ultimately we don't want to give undergeared or underorganized groups any a guaranteed chance of success, because then the content will feel absolutely trivial for players in appropriate gear who communicate, cooperate, and strategize. For Cataclysm, heroic dungeons re-earned their namesake of being heroic by being tuned up to a difficulty that was extreme when compared to Wrath. Now in Kata, you could easily wipe on a trash pack or a boss if you didn't do the mechanics correctly. You did have to interrupt certain casts as soon as possible, and certain trash packs needed CC just to ensure that things went smoothly. For players who had been used to Wrath, this was a serious shock. Biggest of all, thanks to the LFD, with 329 item level, you could queue directly into Heroics with four other random players. Heroics dropped 346 item level by the way. This entry gear was of course the bare minimum. It didn't look at whether that gear was actually relevant for your specialization, and it didn't look at enchants, gems and so on. The results were a rather predictable wipe fest for the impatient, undergeared, or unwilling to learn. And whilst Ghostcrawler seemed to want dungeons to stay as they were, it seems as though the WoW team were told by the higher ups to swing that nerf bat and swing it hard. One month after Ghostcrawler's post that the difficulty was fine, the balance patch 4.0.6 nerfed many aspects of heroic dungeons, making them way easier. The next major patch in 4.1 would nerf heroics even more, and by this time they weren't too far gone from the hold down your W key and collect purples that we had in Wrath. I think part of the problem back then was having a random group finder alongside content which really wasn't all that puggable to be honest. At least not what players have been used to from the Elast expansion. As an organised group the dungeons were very enjoyable, and at lower levels of gear presented a good challenge, and these days in Classic you do have more of a say who is in your dungeon content thanks to there being no LFD. Perhaps this change will work more in the favour of harder early game content in Cataclysm. I do hope that we see the pre-nerf heroics once again in Cata at the start, so we can see how they were when it was current content. We did have pre-nerf heroics in TBC as well, and while some of them were definitely a pain, Blood Furnace, it was good to see how they were then too. Maybe Blizzard will extend the Titan Rune or Heroic Plus system, whatever you want to call it, onto Cataclysm to try and keep the dungeons relevant, as they have been throughout Wrath. They might as well, because the alternative is dungeons are kind of dead content a few months in. Moving on though, you simply cannot have a Cataclysm bad video without bringing up everyone's favourite topic, LFR. Looking for Raid was introduced during the final major content patch of Cataclysm alongside the Dragon Soul Raid. Similar to the previously existing LFD system, this would allow you to queue remotely with 24 other players in order to experience raiding content. The raiding content itself would be nerfed down to accommodate for the fact that you were part of an unorganised pug, and it would award lower item level gear as well. Ghostcrawler, who in part designed this system, would later go on to say during a Reddit AMA that he had, and I quote, a lot of regrets about the Raid Finder in World of Warcraft, and that the goal of getting more players into raiding is a good one, but the way Raid Finder turned out removed, in my opinion anyway, a lot of the epicness of what made raiding raiding. He also went to say more about LFR in a follow-up reply. The problem with Raid Finder was that when the content was too tough, meaning easier than normal but not a cakewalk, then people would tend to drop the raid after a wipe or two. You get these revolving doors where the raid itself was stuck on a boss, but the individuals in the raid had cycled through maybe hundreds of players after a few hours. There was no okay boys and girls let's call it a night moments that you had from a raid leader in an organised guild, and for that matter there was no raid leader who could kick problem players, dictate strategy, or explain the fights. 
For most players, Raid Finder was a weirdly silent and anonymous affair. Final quote from Ghostcrawler. If I had to do it all over again, I think I would advocate we try something more like a group builder where a leader would invite and be able to kick people. Well, a group builder was eventually put into World of Warcraft for pugging content, and we do also have one in Wrath Classic now. How about that? I think what Ghostcrawler was saying though is pretty true, and I can relate to it having done plenty of LFR over the years. And in Cataclysm, by the way, there wasn't even the determination stacking. That wasn't put into the game until late Mr of Pandaria. Determination, in case you don't know, was 5% more damage, healing and health upon a wipe, which could stack up to 10 times. It was more or less a guarantee that you were going to be the boss eventually, no matter how scuffed your raid was. And also on top of that, Raid Finder was just for Dragon Soul and beyond. Tiers 11 and 12 were never on the Raid Finder, though I don't really think Blizzard's going to go back and retune them for this. Finally, and I'm kind of stating the obvious here, but if Raft didn't get the LFD, or hasn't so far, Cataclysm does not seem like it's going to get LFR either. On top of that, the Pug scene these days is very different now too. GDKPs or Gold Bid runs are extremely common, and players now more so than ever are financially motivated to create successful raids. If you are a person who cannot commit to a schedule, the gold bid runs are really filling a gap in the raiding market. So I think even without LFR, there will still be a good chance to see all levels of raiding content. There just won't be a very nerfed version to do it on. On to my next point, because speaking of raiding, I have more to say here. So in Wrath of the Lich King, raiding changed in some form in every single tier. We had 10 and 25 in Nax, to hard mode in Alduar, then heroics, attempts, time gating and more. Blizzard really experimented with raiding in Wrath. What Wrath also did was treat each different raid size and difficulty as a stepping stone. 10 normal was designed to be the easiest, then 10 heroic, then 25 normal, and finally 25 heroic was the peak of raiding that would offer the best rewards possible. But Cataclysm was the birth of the 10-man raiding guild, as in Cataclysm both 10 and 25-man normal or 10 and 25-man heroic now gave the same quality of loot, however 25-man would give more quantity. Blizzard also did a blue post on these changes, claiming that the different size of raids were going to be very similar to one another in difficulty. In reality, there were plenty of fights that were outliers. Sometimes a fight needed a lot of kicks, and a 10-man raid comp would struggle to bring enough. Sometimes a fight had a ton of AoE damage which your raid had to spread for. In that case, a 25-player group would have more problems. And sometimes your 10-man comp was missing raid buffs just because, well, you can't bring as many people. Balancing 10 and 25 man raids whilst they still offered the same level of loot was difficult and it was far from perfect. Blizzard did stick with this format for quite some time though, right up to the end of Mists of Pandaria, where they finally started experimenting with flex raiding. Later during the Warlords of Draenor pre-patch, they would finally settle on Mythic Mode as the new 20 player exclusive hardest difficulty, with Mists of Pandaria's final raid, the Siege of Orgrimmar, being the first to have this toggle. I am kind of curious to see how 10 versus 25 player guilds go in Kata. I did 10 man back then, and it was not forgiving. Each player counts a huge amount towards your success, which is nice and all, but you really can't afford weak links. If one guy keeps dying to avoidable mechanics, they're gonna wipe you. Typically, 10 man has been more casual friendly throughout Wrath. 10 man heroic raiding in Cataclysm was anything but. Still, getting together 25 competent players instead of 10 is not easy either, and there are extra loot rewards if you manage to do so. I imagine the meta will revolve around what is the easiest and fastest way to get this, as it very much tends to, but we'll see how this divide in difficulty plays out a second time around. Finally, we have the final patch, 4.3, The Hour of Twilight. I think this patch is a big deal which players really get hung up on for not liking this expansion. Originally, it brought LFR into the game. Dragon Soul as a raid was not as well received as the ones that came before it, and the two-part Deathwing fight did not live up to expectations. And biggest of all, this patch lasted nine months in total before Mists of Pandaria came out which is three months less than ICC to Cataclysm, by the way. Still, neither of these are the longest final patches ever. Joined towards go to Mr. Pandaria and Warlords of Draenor, 
for both of their final patches being over one year. The final patch has seldom talked about new dungeons too, those being End Time, Well of Eternity and The Hour of Twilight, which I thought were pretty good as a whole. You had some pretty unique and varied encounters against faction leaders, and we also fought Archbishop Benedictus there, a character who arguably could have had a much bigger role as an antagonist in WoW. Also one of the big strengths of Classic as a game mode is that the next expansion has, well, it's already been developed. It just falls to Blizzard to decide to actually release it again and get everything working again. So whilst final patches are notoriously long in World of Warcraft, instead of it being one year, for us it can now be six months, or even less, which isn't so bad. But these are just five of the issues with Cataclysm, which I remember from back in the day. There are absolutely a lot of positives in this expansion too, which I'm sure I'll be talking about in the months to come. What do you reckon though? Will anything be different these days compared to how it was back then if Blizzard do go ahead and decide to re-release Kata? And are there any aspects of the game that you can see realistically changing in some way? Let me know below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.